So the Blackmagic camera app really came out of nowhere and kind of took the mobile video industry by surprise and by storm, I would say. And so I've spent the last six months or so really learning the app and I've made several videos and put them on this channel. And so today I wanna to talk about taking that learning one step further. If you follow my channel for a while, you know that I was a big Filmic Pro guy. I've made tons of videos and I've actually made a course on Filmic Pro, a couple courses around Filmic Pro. Well, I've taken that same approach and now created a course for the Blackmagic camera app. And I didn't think it would ever happen, but I now don't really use Filmic Pro much anymore. I mainly use the Blackmagic camera app as my video camera app. And so what I'm going to do in this video is show you a couple sections of the course for free. I know courses aren't for everyone, but if you really wanna learn an app and you don't wanna to have to search YouTube and look for answers and hit comment sections, et cetera, then they can be really good. And in particular, if you are switching to it from, again, maybe Film It Pro or whatever app out there that you've used, or you're just wanting to learn it new. The first section I'm going to show is just a very general overview of the app interface and controls. This first section, I am shooting in front of a basic background just so you can see what I'm doing. And later when we get to the how-to section, I'll have some sample objects in front of the camera. But initially, I'm just going to do a general overview of the app interface and controls. And the first thing you'll see is the app is fairly clean. The interface is fairly clean. When I say clean, I don't mean there's not information on the screen. That's good though. You want that information, but everything is kind of laid out in a very clean way, I think. And I like that in particular compared to other apps. And the nice thing is not only is it laid out in a nice way, everything is actually right here at your fingertips, really on the main screen. So you don't have to go into other menus to do most of the stuff. And the main menus are over here on the right. We'll get to that in a minute. But just looking at the interface, we'll start from left to right. You've got your lens, the information below that is showing a LUT, which I'm using right now. LUTs are used when you're using a log profile to show as a preview. And again, I'll talk about that more in a minute. You got your frames per second. I'm shooting 24 frames per second. You've got your shutter. I've got it set to angle. You can use angle or shutter speed, which would be a fraction. Next, you've got your iris or your aperture. That is fixed. And this particular iPhone is a F1.8, but you can't change that like you can on a traditional camera. And that's an important point to remember. Then you've got time code and ISO. ISO and shutter is how you control the exposure. You've got white balance across the top. Tin is related to white balance. You've got your resolution, which is 4K, and then you got your battery indicator. And then at the bottom left, you've got a histogram and then your storage indicator showing how much is left on the phone or if you're using an external drive. And then this is a audio meter. On the right, you've got your record button in the middle. And then you've got some other controls that again are right at your fingertips that are ones you will use quite a bit. And then on the far right, you've got access to your camera, which is what we're on right now, your media, which is your library, and then chat, which is if you're using Blackmagic Cloud, which we'll talk about later, you could chat with people editing your footage in DaVinci Resolve or what have you. And then you've got your main settings menu down here. And so again, everything is laid out so you can just quickly look at the screen and know what's up, which again, for a lot of apps is not the case. If you've ever used a Blackmagic camera, a traditional camera, like the cinema camera, the pocket cinema camera, this has a very similar layout to that. Now we'll look a little bit deeper into the app and talk about ISO and shutter. All right, now I wanna talk about ISO and shutter speed as they are very interconnected using a phone. They're part of the exposure triangle on a traditional camera. You're ISO, shutter, and aperture, or iris. But again, on a phone, your iris is fixed. Right now, I'm on the ultra-wide, and it's a 2.2. And so you can't change that. But what you can change is your ISO and your shutter. And as I've mentioned throughout this course, you want to have, more times than not, a 180-degree shutter. And so what I tend to do is set it to that, 
or if you're using fractions, you'd want to be at 148th. I'm shooting 24 frames per second. Remember the 180 degree shutter rule. And what that is for is to get ideal motion blur. If you're not shooting with ideal motion blur, it's a big giveaway on a phone. And the way you get that when you're outside is to use an ND filter. ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. So you put an ND filter on if you're out in bright light. And that way you get the proper exposure with the right motion blur and the shutter using, again, the 180 degree shutter rule. If you're inside like I am right now, you don't have to worry about ND because the light levels are fine. So again, I'm on 180 degree shutter, so I'll lock that. And then to get the proper exposure, you have to use ISO. And on this particular lens, the lowest ISO I can do is 32. On my main camera, it's 55. Each one's different again. And as a general rule, you wanna keep your ISO as low as possible. The more ISO, the brighter the image will be, but you're also adding digital noise. And so do your best to keep the ISO as low as possible. Again, in here with the studio lights and stuff, I'm having no problem because a low ISO like that, 32 with a good shutter is an ideal setting. That would look great. But just remember to lock your shutter in particular when you're shooting motion. Like right now, it wouldn't really matter, but anything that has movement in it, you'll want that motion blur that gives it a more filmic, more cinematic. It's not just for film, it's for any kind of video. It gives it a more traditional look and that's what you want. But one thing, whenever you lock the shutter, you don't have auto ISO over here. And so if you wanted to lock the shutter and then ride the exposure like you're doing a run and gun shoot, you can't do it. Unless the way you do that is you undo the shutter and now you go back to exposure, then you can hit auto and that's like full auto. So now you got the A next to ISO and the A next to shutter. That is something that I would only do if I'm doing maybe a documentary shoot and I'm going to be going in and out of different settings because the camera will auto expose. Let me cover the lens. You can see, see how the, it moved. Not something that I would do very often at all, but if you do want to use auto, that's how you do it. But if I turn that off and then I end up locking my shutter on 180, which is what I want to do more times than not. Now, when I go back to exposure, it is adjusting the ISO. That actually kind of confused me when I first got the app. And so hopefully that makes sense. And then hopefully it also makes sense that you lock your shutter to get ideal motion blur, whether you're inside or outside, because you want 180 degree shutter. Or again, if you're shooting 24, it'd be 148th. If you're shooting 25, it'd be 150th. Shooting 30, it'd be 160th and so on. And that also applies to those slow motion shots I did earlier. If you're shooting 120 frames per second, you'd want your shutter to be 240th. Again, that's a fractional, but if you leave it on 180, you're good to go. But getting the proper shutter and the proper ISO not only makes the image look better from a motion blur perspective with shutter, but then it allows you to also get the best exposure and overall look of your footage. So hopefully these videos gave you some insight into using the Blackmagic camera app and additionally into the course that you may consider taking. And if you're interested in that, I've got a link in the description along with a discount code. And if you don't, all good. I'll be back in another video soon talking about lenses or cages or uh, whatever the next contraption is that comes out for the iPhone. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.